talk to Matt, he was quick to say that you are a fucking good looking guy. <laughs> That's my boy, Betty. That's my boy. Well, you never really answered my question about the relationship between Slade and Matt. Because we, as viewers, so clearly saw all these power plays and sexual tension. What was going on there? Oh, uh, well, you know, yeah, I think there's definitely a little bit of uh, homosexual uh, subtext undertones there, but um, no, I, I don't, uh, no, I don't think so. I think um, I think there's always going to be that sort of innuendo or subtext when there's two strong male characters that have a strong friendship. You know, I think if they're both powerful and there's a lot of energy, then there will often be tension and that could be interpreted as sexual tension. It doesn't really bother me. I think it's quite a nice subtext. But um, no, we, yeah, we definitely weren't playing that as a choice. Um, we weren't, we weren't uh, layering that into our performance or anything like that. But um, yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I could see. I could see how uh, that would be interpreted that way. Well, it's interesting because you're saying it's because of these two powerful males, and yeah. I, I can't speak for Kelly, but for me, I didn't see it because of that. I think I saw it because of the manipulative element, right. where you're in the wheelchair, you have right. this power, so you really have to charm and wheedle. Right, right, and get right, away. right. I see. So yeah, it was a, on a manipulative level. Yeah, that makes that makes complete and utter sense. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that does make sense. How did you prepare to get into that wheelchair and be in that state? Um, well, I just spent a lot of a lot of time in that wheelchair before I, we actually started shooting. I had it available to me for about a month before we started the shoot, and I just made it part of me, really. I spent a lot of time just out in the car park at Bard Mine, just cruising around in it, because I figured it was so exciting when I first got in the chair because I went straight away and now as an actor it's all from here up and it's all in my face my hands and my voice and so my hands became quite valuable to me as well you know and um, especially with the you know the black black gloves and then in series four in the early days it was like a lot of it was all just coming out here which made it made it quite fun and that's so I, I, I almost made that as a point of focus initially just my hands as if as if they everything that I was saying was coming out through here so that was quite a good preparation and um, yeah so just spend a lot of time imagining that the frame size of the camera is just there and that anything down here is dead you know? So that was, that's quite an interesting exercise for preparation as well, yeah. yeah. it was good. Was it always the intention for him to get out of the wheelchair? No, it wasn't. Really? No, it wasn't always the intention. It was something that I only read. We were at that stage, I'd heard murmurs of it at the start of series five. Yeah, okay. Um, but of course, it was, I think, to a point it was a logistical thing as well. Once he moved Ram to Liberty, and once he was, flying solo um, away from the technos and stuff. There was no real way that he could be cruising around town in his um, electric wheelchair. You know, they could have put him in a manual chair or whatever. But I think part of it was the logistics. And it was, to be honest, not one of my favorite study moments that he got out of the chair. To be honest, I was kind of a bit bummed initially. It grew on me and I accepted it, but I, I don't know, it was a bit far-fetched for me, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like, well, what's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> well, how was the physicality of like playing that learning to that walk again when you're awesome. so weak? Yeah, that was real fun, eh? That was, that was really fun. Yeah, was, I would have liked to have had a bit more time with that. We were quite rushed with shooting a lot of those scenes. But um, I haven't seen them. I don't think I've ever seen any of that stuff. Never seen it, so no. I don't know what it's like. No, no, I remember shooting it, but I've never seen it. I've hardly seen any of series five. You don't watch your own work? Traditionally, I do, but I just, um, like, that stuff wasn't broadcast in New Zealand, and I just never went about fetching it out to, to look at it. I watched most of series four, um, but I've hardly seen any of series five. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'd like to see some. Hopefully, well, you know how it is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, what kind of critique do you give yourself now, being where you are, that you went back and you watched your work? Yeah. Um, 
Well, I would like to think that I've grown a lot as an actor since then. I mean, I really fell into the deep end as an actor going onto the tribe. I'd never acted professionally before. I wasn't trained. I'd done TV presenting and had fallen into this drama that I was really learning on the on the on the job and on the fly. I think I must have had some sort of good natural instinct to be able to uh, to, to get there, but I don't think I had much consistency in my work back in those days compared to now. I think um, hopefully I've learned and grown from. I've had a lot more experience since then, and I think I have the ability now to be able to pull on those emotions a lot easier than I did then, and to, to be more consistent with my work. But um, you know, I still think that there's a few things that I, when I watched season four, that I liked. But not many. No, I think, um, but I think that's natural. Most actors will cringe when they watch their own work. But yeah, you know, so I was only 16 or something when I did season four, so you're a teenager, you know? You're still learning who you are yourself, let alone as an actor. Yeah. It's tough, though, critiquing yourself. Like, it's tough watching you. Or, to, you know, it's tough talking about self review in any sense, isn't it? Like for you guys, if you're talking about whatever field you work in, if people say, oh, well, what, are you, what are you like? How good at your job are you? It's a tough question, you know? Yeah. You sit there and go, well. Saying that I put the recorder over there because when I listen back to the tapes from last year, I am so loud. Yeah, yeah, see? It's obnoxious. Yeah. It's awful. <laughs> They're like, why did we say that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. See, exactly. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's totally it. You know, I was trying to explain to my mum the other day because. Uh, I'm working on a show back home at the moment called Shorten Street, which is like it's New Zealand's kind of most popular drama at home. Yeah, thanks. And um, I play a Christian nurse on the, on, the show, on the show, which is pretty funny, and it's a lot different to any other role that I've ever played. It's very you know, straight. And, yeah, to go and it's a great role, really enjoy it. But because it's so popular in New Zealand, I mean, all the shows that I've worked on have only been popular overseas, but not in New Zealand. And um, so this is the first time that I've really had people when I go to the supermarket or whatever just being swamped. And um, I was trying to explain to my mum what that's like and what it feels like and um, she, she couldn't really understand and it, it was really funny and then she, it's because you know my mum and I are very close and she can usually understand where I'm coming from and, 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 and she couldn't, she just couldn't grasp it and understandably because she'd never dealt with herself. Funny though, the next week that their our road at home in Christchurch got blocked off and she was with my stepfather. He ended up nutting out at the cops like what the fuck are you doing? You should have blocked off our road. Just get the hell out, let us go back. And it was all they were being filmed the whole time and then and they ended up on the cop show on the Sunday night. Oh, no. and, and it was so funny because mum rang me this straight away afterwards and she goes, baby, I understand. She was like, I've had people calling me up ever since I was on there and they've been hassling me and you know, I've had all these people coming out of the woodwork and I'm like, mum, welcome to my world, man. You know? And now she totally understood it. It was really, 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 actually, even though I felt for her and I empathized for her situation, it was really refreshing because she had, she understood my perspective, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, 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 I don't know how I ended up on that rant away. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so.